Stalkers in a mobile park. Fuck. James Cameron. Paranormal happenings. All that and more. Cody, you know what to do next. Get over here, fucking James Cameron, you fucking bitch! Get off, just get off of him! Shit! He didn't do any- Well, I guess he did something wrong. What the fuck? He did everything wrong! He's bleeding! I don't care. Oh. Let him sink with the Titanic. Shit. I need a new mop. You don't need a new mop. You just need to, you know, skin him alive and make him a rug. Oh. Fuck. Fuck you, James. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That was awesome. <laughs> it was, right? Yeah. High five, dude. Yeah. All right. So, um... Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> To episode 10 of the Super Media Brothers podcast. Jesus Chrysler. Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah. Jesus Christ. He bloody nothing. Jesus hot sauce. Wait, what was that quote? Jesus hot sauce Christmas, Christmas cake. <laughs> Yay. Yay. We still remember. Uh huh. Mm. Speaking of horror. I know. Not whores, but. Well, we could, but not for the episode. No. Horror. 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 There's horror and sci-fi. We're going to be talking about some horror and sci-fi movies today. Oh, snap. Mm. Uh, yeah. <sighs> so, for our lovely 10th episode, yeah. we're giving you nothing but movies. Yeah. Mm. Silver screen. That's right. Hollywood. And a co the ones I'm talking about, one of them has been kind of in development hell, and the other one was uh, just announced a couple of days ago. If anybody out there... Uh, uses the website slash film. Uh, fuck, they they always have really good up to date news on movies in general. Um, this one is from Tom DeLong of Blink One Eighty Two and Angels and Airwaves. He did a uh, a book, a website, and a couple of short stories uh, named Strange Times and. The books were The Ghost in the Girl and The Curse of, Stup of Superstition Mountain. Stupid Stition. Stupid Stition. Stupid Stition. The Curse of Superstition Mountain. Um, he just announced that he is directing a feature length of it. It's going to be an R-rated sci-fi comedy. And it deals with uh, these these kids that are all friends and they skateboard throughout their, their town and everything. Well... They just happen to stumble upon some paranormal activity that is happening in their neighborhood, and they go to explore it. Mm -hmm. Rest is history, but it's based on the characters from the Curse of Super of Superstition Mountain. Mm -hmm. Stupid Stitcher! I just want to say stupid. No. The Curse of Stupid Mountain. It's a stupid podcast. Stupid fucking podcast. Fuck. Fuck. James Cameron. Yes. <laughs> Copyright. Yes. Um. But no, it's uh, it's really cool though. The, the actual website Strange Times was kind of a uh like a look into paranormal activities or, you know, alien happenings because Tom DeLonge is very much into, like, the Area 51 aspect. He, he's he been a big proponent of research into, you know, UFO sightings and alien uh, sightings, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. And this is right up his alley. And I like that it's going to pretty much be a good independent sci-fi horror. So the stuff that he did with the Poet Anderson story with the animated film and the short films and the soundtracks to it, which Angels and Airwaves will be providing a music soundtrack for this as well. So every time, that. yeah, right. Every time he's putting a project out, they do accompanying music uh -huh. and it's him and Elon Rubin from Nine Inch Nails. It's, it's those two guys. Oh, that's going to be awesome. Sounds yeah. Like well, Elon plays drums, but he does like guitar and bass and stuff. And he did um, the Dreamwalker of Nightmares, Chasing Shadows. Like he did those uh, albums and EPs with Tom, and they were really good. Mm. So we'll be getting some more music as well as an awesome uh, science fiction movie, which I'm I'm a big fan of sci-fi. Me too. And you know a lot of <clears throat> a lot of people like you can you can have either horror or sci-fi, and then there's sometimes where they just they cross together, like and, aliens. Yeah, absolutely, dude. And uh, like aliens, aliens. I'm, I'm 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 pushing that topic very strongly. Like I'm, I'm picturing the guy from Ancient Alien. Aliens. aliens. I'm not saying it was aliens, but aliens. aliens. 
Uh, yes, uh, they, they just announced it. I'm not sure. There's not a release date yet. All I know is there's a start time for 2017 on this. Nice. Yeah. Do I have to? Mm-hmm. Oh. You do. I did bring this up. So, I'm pretty sure y'all are very aware by now, if you care enough to want to know. James Cameron is actually creating not one, but three sequels to Avatar. He's currently working on the second one as we speak, doing the motion capturing, blah, 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 whatever. I I thought it was interesting because it's a movie that didn't really have any kind of impact on cinema besides grossing so much money in the box office. And I think it was mostly because of the colors and the environment and the 3D technology and shit like that. Yeah, it was what basically is the current 3D cinema setting. Yeah, so I don't think that movie deserves enough recognition that it already has, mainly because the tropes that they've used in that movie are already done and played out and the only okay the only aspect that i may give credit for is the fact that the main character jake decided to stick his consciousness into the alien body and stick with it i like that idea but that's about it you know everything else was just over the top overly done um the sci-fi element the alien element um the fact that there's this like war grown you know marine character that's just like i hate these aliens we should kill them now kind of it's james cameron makes money off of shit that shouldn't be making money off of now granted titanic pretty important movie in you know cinema history i mean it made a lot of fucking money back in the day when it came out and it told a romantic side of the tragedy of the titanic okay good job james yeah but avatar really did not need as much of a push as it has when it comes to the popularity, but a lot of reasons, like I said earlier. And the fact that he's doing three more just baffles me. It's like peop- people are dumb enough to watch these movies now. He's going underwater with this one, dude. Why? This whole this whole thing apparently takes place... On, like, If you really sit and think about Avatar, it's, it's a fucking war over the ecosystem. Yeah, eco-terrorism. Yeah. That's uh, all this uh, is. And... And they have sex with their ponytails. Yes. <laughs> I'm, we're not, I, okay, let me just let me backtrack. I'm not dogging. I'm not dogging James Cameron now. I mean, I'm not dogging James Cameron. In, I'm dogging him now because let's be honest. Aliens was a really great movie. The Terminator one, one and two were fucking amazing. You know, where's that guy? Yeah, I know. He's not. He's not present here. I can guarantee that. No, no. He's... I think it's becoming more of like a Michael Bay syndrome where he knows he can make money off of this particular aspect, so he's just going to keep creating. That's and it took him how many years to finally come up with the second one? Well, I mean, it's not so much that he had, he had the idea for them all, but it's like actually scheduling all the actors and getting the budget together. And fuck, dude. I mean, Avatar came out in what, 2009? Yeah. That was eight, eight years, years ago. ago. Shit, and this probably won't come out until 2018 or 19. Uh, I don't think it's going to be that late. Well, it might be. Who 18. Knows? Next, next. Uh, we'll ride around next Christmas, not this coming. Um, from what I understand, he planned on shooting all these movies back to back. Fuck. Like, what, what concepts does he have with the other two? This bastard is trying to go head to head with Star Wars. I just realized that. He ain't going to succeed. I'm sorry. Star Wars has way more, you know, has decades of fandom behind it. Yeah, I was going to say, because if, if it comes out next December, that's what he's trying to do. And that's when episode eight comes out. Yeah, and then that means that... Well, no, 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 that's when uh, the Han Solo, oh, the Han Solo movie comes out, no, 18. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be a... You ain't going to beat that, James. I'm sorry. Oh, man. Fuck. Well, just prepare your anuses next year. And your ponytails. And your ponytails. And your blue balls and... Blue vagina. Your blue vagina. Your blue waffles. <laughs> I'm, so I'm pretty sure there were some aliens that had fucking blue waffles. I'm not sorry about that at all. I'm fucking not. No, I'm, no, let's be serious here. Let's have an advertisement for, you know, those Avatar... What are they calling? The Navi? Yeah. 
Let's have a moment in silence for the Navi who suffer from alien STDs. And now we're back, because fuck James Cameron. That's right. <clears throat> so Blue waffles. <laughs> so bitch. I want to know if they're going to have like an Ego promotion. <laughs> I was just thinking that shit. Next year. And they're going to have blue waffles. Blue ba- oh, my God. Blueberry waffles. But they're okay. all blueberry. Whoops, all blueberries. <laughs> Whoops, all blueberries. What would blow my mind even more is if the marketing team just didn't realize what they were doing and they did it anyway. And everybody's just like, eh, eh, eh. I'm pretty sure they're going to have that one guy that's going to be like, you shouldn't do that. And everybody's just like, shut up. We're going to do it anyway. We're going to do it anyway. Because, you know, <laughs> fuck you. Part of a part of a balanced breakfast. Uh, yeah, moving on. Puke. Yeah, to another sequel. Um, to a movie that legit terrified so many fucking people. And the movie was a it was a PG th- no it was a PG no it was rated R. I was thinking it was PG thirteen, but still the movie was so just. Just, oh my god, the, the strangers. Mm-hmm. I mean, this could happen anywhere. And then after tonight, after we explain this one, it could happen to us. Yeah. Right now. Right fucking now. Okay. The Strangers 2 has finally been announced that it will be filming this year. After spending well over, um, you know, eight, nine, ten years in development hell. Uh, <clears throat> it centers on a family who arrives at a secluded mobile home park, fuck our lives, uh, on a road trip, and they stay the night in a borrowed trailer after the power goes out, only to be tormented by three psychopaths wearing familiar masks. Fuck, man. I mean, the first one, like, with Liv Tyler and all that, like, this, there was the scene when she was standing in the middle of that room and she was smoking a cigarette, and then you just see in the back, the guy just kind of step lightly out of the shadows and he just backs off because i mean he could have walked up and fucked her like over nine ways of sunday right there and they just they sat back and they tortured the fuck out of they stalked him and just fucked with him and it's psychological man that's one of the worst horror aspects the psychological not really the physical part yeah exactly i mean because i can watch decapitations all day i can watch stuff like you know nightmare on elm street which is i think is one of the best horror movie franchises out there and <laughs> uh no, yeah. no, 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 no. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, that one, and then, like, you know, I could watch, like I said, Chainsaw, I could watch, you know, just blood guts and fantasy horror, like, Phantasm and all this other shit like that, but to put the psychological aspect into it and set it in a place that it could really happen, I recently watched Don't Breathe, and that movie fucked with me, too, because, I mean, there's, there's a little bit more to it, I'm not gonna spoil it too much, but... For fuck's sake, it was scary because that could happen. Yeah. Um, but the strangers, <clears throat> it, the fact that like there was also a female involved with it too. Because it was like two dudes and a chick that were like, because you were home. Like mm. really, dude? <clears throat> Fuck. <laughs> and it could have. It was probably random. That was yeah. probably a fucking random attack. And same with this. And who knows. The people that are in this mobile park, the, the fucking killers, they might be all be all fucking like neighbors and shit. And everyone's like, we're so, bored. Yeah, yeah, we're fucking, we're fuck, we're fucking bored, and, we and we're want, horny. We're horny. We want to stab some motherfuckers in two ways. In two fucking ways. Yeah. Stab them right in the pussy. And then stab them in the head. And then stab them right in the head. Cause we's in a. We's in a mobile park and we we want to kill motherfuckers. But I mean, for real, they probably are neighbors or some shit. Probably. Maybe they all live together. It's like, oh hey Cheryl, you know you feel like raping somebody today. Look, oh that's fucked up. I, it is. It's so literally. fucked up. Literally. Literally. But man, come on. Like, I just I don't know. Like the first one, like I was telling you before we started, it's scary. I was like, oh I'm glad I don't live in a cabin or a house that's you know on a big S- piece of property in the middle. Secluded. Of the yeah. yeah. But um. I, I do live in a mobile park, and it's a little quiet. And it's too quiet. It's a little too quiet. These motherfuckers here will come up and kill me. Shh, Richie. It'll be okay. Just go to sleep. No, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> no, fuck you. I'm, I'm gonna fucking sleep with all the lights on and a butcher knife in my hand. I'm gonna go get Cheryl. <laughs> I'm gonna go get Cheryl. Hold on, real quick. 
Cheryl seems to be like a recurring name in horror movies. I mean, she was uh, Ash's sister in The Evil Dead. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I probably recall all the movies, mm-hmm. Cheryl. And speaking of Ash, the picture of Ash, he's just looking right at you right now. Just behind. He's like, hey! Hi! <laughs> Hi! Hi! Uh, what you doing? What you doing? Uh, Johannes Roberts is directing this, and I tried to look and see what he was doing. Um, there was a movie he did called Roadkill, and I, I f- vaguely remember like hearing that title, and I tried to look into it, but it, did, it wasn't very familiar. I, I seem to think that this is his first... Um, bigger film i mean because you know the first one made good money at the box office i mean mm-hmm. obviously they wouldn't have wanted the sequel to it but i mean it took them almost 10 years yeah and i mean well shit it took james cameron almost 10 years to make a fucking a sequel to avatar but nobody cares about him eh, they, some people do which i'm sorry if you do Post on Facebook if you care about James Cameron. Post it on our wall, on our Facebook page. Please, let us know if you care about that twat waffle. That's right. Facebook.com slash Supermedia Bros. And then tag my name and be like, hey, Cody, guess what? I like James Cameron. Go fuck yourself. That's right. And then while you're at it, you want to get people to like our page and you know follow us and get your friends to tell us to go fuck ourselves because they like James Cameron too? Do it. Yeah, because we need all the attention we need. We do. <laughs> you know, from the two of you that listen to this fucking podcast. I know, right? Speaking of two, <laughs> these these are sequels. But, dude, I'm really stoked about this next movie that you brought up because... Um, I've heard I've heard vaguely about it until like I actually saw a synopsis on um, this website I was going on, um, the cure for wellness, or a cure for wellness. I'm sorry, I don't know why the cure came up. Robert Smith. Uh, fuck yeah, Robert Smith. <laughs> <laughs> so I was curious about this one because it's more of like a psychological thriller than anything of a horror, you know, gore but gore fest. Um, so basically, they have this. What was it? A ambitious young executive sent to recover his company CEO from an idyllic, idyllic, I guess, mysterious wellness center, quote. But come to find out that this wellness center is um, has this strange illness going around that they can't seem to cure properly. And then come to find out later, after he's there for so long, that he starts to succumb to the illness himself. And he doesn't know how long it's going to take for him to get away from it. Mm. And this is Dane DeHaan, mm-hmm. who is well known for his role as the Green Goblin in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. He was in, um, oh damn it, um, Chronicle. He was he was oh. the young kid in Chronicle that oh, yeah. was like started abusing his powers and stuff. And I have to drop this just because I didn't have very high hopes for it, and I'm not like. Jumping on the bandwagon, because I know this is a very touchy subject for musicians out there. But Dane DeHaan was also in the Metallica film Through the Never, which takes place during a Metallica concert. He is a roadie, and he has to find... He's, his, he's instructed to pick up this mysterious package and get it back to the band before they finish their concert. Mm. And the visuals in it are really fucking cool, because it looks like a giant acid trip through the city of... Uh, Los Angeles and it's looking like war torn and there's people on uh, it's like very post apocalyptic people on horses with like fires and explosions through the city and he's just like getting attacked you know while he's going through it was really a cool concept yeah and the whole time it's happening it's spliced with footage from the Metallica concert and it's all their old shit that they're playing Mm -hmm. so I guess that's what made it appealing to me is that they were playing a lot of shit from the Black Album on backwards yeah instead of the newer stuff yeah but Cure for Wellness, dude, was it's a Gore Verbinski mm-hmm. movie. And see, what I'm kind of expecting is if this illness, quote, is more of an actual illness that affects the mind, but it's something that they can't really contain. And what I'm expecting with that is for it to have more of a heavy dosage of the trippy visuals when it comes to like going into the minds of the people who are affected, and then eventually the character, the main character here, um, having him go through the visuals as well because obviously he must be locked in almost like an inception kind of world where everything's just kind of like not the way it seems it's kind of twisting and shaping and forming and then it comes into like a horror element where it's just like recurring nightmares you know parts of your past that you can't let go of you know stuff like that and it's just they don't know why I could see this all working because Gore Verbinski has a lot of experience with all those aspects um 
He directed The Ring, which mm-hmm. was actually good. I mean, if you go back and look at that one, it was really good. It, the visuals were striking. It was legitimately skin-crawling. And then he directed the first three Pirates of the Caribbean films. So he's got the practical makeup. Like, you know how some of the imagery in, the, in those films were, like, a little grotesque, you know, looking? Mm-hmm. And, and then he also has directed The Lone Ranger and Rango. So, I mean, he's got, like, a little bit of everything. I'm, I can't wait for this one. Yeah, this one seems like an interesting concept to me, especially when it's like a, a, a almost like a psych ward that goes to a wellness place or like a little like spa treatment place or yeah. something. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's that's really cool. Um, I actually, uh, if you want to go off the cuff here, I forgot about something that I just uh, looked at the other day. It was, um, you know, Key and Peele, right? Yeah. Okay, Jordan Peele. He's actually making his directorial debut with a film called Get Out. Have you heard about this one? I've heard of it. Okay. Yeah, that's the um. It's the dude from Black Mirror. Yeah. The, the black uh, from the second episode. It's the 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 girlfriend brings his real boyfriend her boyfriend to the family and they have like all these slaves running around and shit. Yeah, and it's the fact that they keep disappearing, and <clears throat> he meets uh he meets this one guy, and he's relieved like and. and you know, Jordan Peele has come out and said this. He's like, it's a black guy that goes and it's, you know, a predominantly like a white, you know, crowd. And he sees this other black guy there and the guy's like, hey, you know, get the fuck out of here. Like, he's warning him the whole time. And the the trailer suggests that one of the ladies in the family is a, hypn- is a hypnotist or whatever. And well, it no, looks it, fucking creepy looking. Yeah, it does. But there was one part where the dad, I guess, was like working on like a, a medical doctor kind of type. He was actually like performing something on the people. Like he was knocking them out, shrinking them and shit. So I don't know if he was doing that or what. That's fucking weird. I want, oh, dude. Like, and I was just having this discussion with, uh, shout out uh, to Devin, Dallas Stodev. I was just having this discussion with him the other day about this movie. And he goes, I don't know whether to take it seriously or not. And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, because some of the parts in the trailer looked a little laughable. And I said, well, it is Jordan Peele from Key and Peele. But Jordan Peele has stated before that the movie is not, it's not based on, but it's very inspired by the Stepford Wives, but in a satirical kind of sense. Mm -hmm. So I do imagine it being Jordan Peele that it will have maybe a little bit of, you know, humor in there, but it looks to be a full blown, like actual horror movie because I mean, it's rated R and it was rated R for like, you know, disturbing violent content and you know partial nudity and you know gory image like shit like that and just the trailer it it just looks like a really off the wall movie and it looks to be highly original so i'm that's one i'm excited about Mm -hmm. uh well you mentioned kind of going off a little bit but you mentioned the first three pirates of the caribbean i actually was at work watching the super bowl thing Mm -hmm. (laughs) and um they had the pirates of the caribbean trailer for the new one um dead men tell no tell oh yeah Oh, I can't wait for that one. That one just looks like a hellacious on seas kind of like event. Like everybody's coming off of like their low, the highs from everything that happened before, and all of a sudden it's like this one ship comes out of nowhere. The um, the Flying Dutchman, I think it is the mm-hmm. original one, and now they're like terrorizing the seas, like fuck, you know, no holes bar kind of shit. And then um, at the end, they show um, Jack Sparrow, you know, just sitting there with a bottle of rum, and it's just like Dead Men Tell No Tales, yeah, or something like that. Uh, okay. I love that franchise so much mm-hmm. because it's adventure, but there is a little horror element to some of that stuff. And it was funny, speaking of horror, um, Barbosa's character, or um, what's his name, the actor? Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Tate? I think so, yeah. No. I I feel like I'm saying somebody completely different right now, so you might want to find that. Because if I find out I'm saying somebody different, I'm going to be like, yeah, I'm a dumbass. But basically, they showed one scene where he looked terrified, like, for once. Like, he actually has mortality now, but he is legit terrified. And I was just like, Jeffrey Rush. Yeah, thank you, because I think Jeffrey Tate was, like, a fucking, like, rock, rock singer or some shit. Yeah. I'm fucking dumb. But no, like, <laughs> it was funny because I saw his face and I was just like, wow, even Barbosa's well, scared and something's wrong. Like, because that man literally went through shit. You know, he freaking, like, did a wedding during a freaking whirlpool <laughs> while fighting <laughs> he's just like oh just kiss already right and then if he's terrified that means damn damn yeah. son yeah somebody's mm. fucking gonna kill everybody somebody's fucking mm. oh I'm sure somebody <laughs> is <laughs> mm. 
fucking mm. tentacles. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch. Uh, the eighties dating video pirates of the Car- of the Caribbean version. Especially that one guy that dressed like a Viking. He'd be actually a pirate. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, what if um, the goddess guy that looks like he's flat out of the Breakfast Club or some shit like that? Mm-hmm. It's it's Sparrow. Yeah, you're the goddess. <laughs> why are, why is the room gone? Yeah, why is the room gone? Because the goddess it? fucking took it. The, the goddess took it. Damn it! I'm looking for some rum. Are you the rum? Are the you the rum? <laughs> all the rum? Every rum? Because the rum is all <laughs> rum. Mm. <laughs> 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 you fucking, fucking too much of it to make you throw up. Are you Tia Dama? The DT Dama? Because <laughs> she is the goddess. She's the Calypso. All the Calypso. All the Calypso. <laughs> and she has crabs. Because <laughs> she is crabs. Uh, C transmitted diseases. Mm-hmm. Mm. So. But yeah, uh, so Strange Times, A Cure for Wellness. Scurvy transmitted diseases. Scurvy. Tra- oh my god, yeah. <laughs> Dude, yes, high five. <laughs> uh, Avatar 2, The Strangers 2, Get Out, and Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales. That looks like a pretty loaded year. Yeah. I mean, On top of everything else that's coming out. So. Yeah, and I just wanted to spotlight. I'm glad we're spotlighting, you know, like we spotlighted a couple of them that are like, you know, high profile, but then there's a couple that it's like, hey, like, Check these out, too. We don't want to bring you just the top of the world entertainment. We want to bring you the underground as well. And then the cesspool that is James Cameron. (sighs) (laughs) It'd be funny if Kevin Costner just fucking pops up out of nowhere. Dry land is not a myth! I've seen it! (laughs) I was on the Titanic! (laughs) He's like, the fuck are you doing here, man? And now I'm on Avatar 2 sequel. Because they're underwater. And I need a fucking acting job. Please, James. (laughs) I won't, Kevin, cost you a lot of money to put in your movie. I promise. Cost, cost more. <laughs> Kevin costs more. <laughs> no wonder nobody hires him because he's Kevin costs more. Better than Kevin Sorbo. Mm. Mm. Ow. Yeah, you're welcome. Ew. He's still bleeding out. Oh, he's rotten. Oh, they got crows on him now. <laughs> yeah. And seagulls. Pluck out his eyeballs. Or just pluck his balls off. He doesn't have any balls because he's sold out. Oh, snap. Well, I guess that about wraps it up for this one. It's a short episode. I know, it's okay. we got to wrap him up and kind of throw him out. Put him in a freaking carpet and just roll out. <laughs> a Camarito. And put him in an av- Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck. Well, okay, yeah. So, <laughs> that was episode 10. Oh, I saw him twist, sorry. Oh, shit. <laughs> a Cure for Strange Times. Until next week, I've been Minna Agent Raw. And I'm Okami. Stop it, James. Fuck you, bitch. Shades on! We're off.